As we've come to expect from the Borderlands team, the series' first major spin-off is an exciting tonal deviation for the long-running looter shooter, swapping out grungy sci-fi for a slightly warped interpretation of classic fantasy tropes. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a Dungeons and Dragons inspired adventure where Tiny Tina herself dictates your epic adventure to defeat the very evil and equally charismatic Dragon Lord. Wonderlands adds a ton of cool new stuff on top of the existing Borderlands formula, such as spells and melee weapons, but its biggest change from previous incarnations is the introduction of more traditional RPG classes for players to pick from. There are six classes to choose in Wonderlands, with each one offering a completely unique selection of active skills and passive buffs. With so much choice on offer, you might be stuck trying to decide which class is best for you. Well, never fear, weary fate maker. We here at Rock Paper Shotgun are here to advise you on which class you should pick before embarking on your quest through Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. I'm going to give you a rundown of each class, highlighting what makes them unique, as well as what type of players will enjoy using them. I'll also go into detail about what secondary class you should pick, as one of the best parts about Wonderlands is discovering really fun combos that will transform your character into an unstoppable force of pure destruction. So, without any further waffling, these are the best classes in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Each of the game's six classes comes with one passive skill that is either active all the time or is triggered after performing certain actions such as killing an enemy or reloading a gun, as well as two action skills. Action skills function the same as they did in previous Borderlands games, allowing you to perform devastating damage-based attacks or enable powerful buffs after a short cooldown period. You can only equip one action skill at a time, but it's a good idea to swap between them as often as possible possible depending on your current situation. A word of warning, once you've picked your class, you're stuck with it for the entire game. You can respec, but your primary class is locked in for the entirety of your time with Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. So basically, don't make my mistake and choose the worst class in the entire game first and have to restart five hours later, because that sucks. Alright, let's talk about the actual classes themselves, starting with the Spore Warden. This class is all about two things, using your unique abilities to deal massive damage to enemies and instructing your little mushroom pal to go and fart on things. Yes, you heard that right. Choosing the Spore Warden gives you a little mushroom companion that produces clouds of noxious gas to poison your adversaries. It has a very visible arse, just in case you weren't completely aware that this is still very much a Borderlands game in all but name. Alongside old farty fungi, the Spore Warden has two action skills, Barrage and Blizzard. Barrage allows you to summon a spectral bow that fires seven arrows, dealing ability damage to any enemies you hit. Your arrows also ricochet twice, giving them the chance to cause additional damage to either your original target or any enemies unlucky enough to be standing next to them. Barrage's damage also scales alongside your gun damage, making this a powerful skill to wield if you're planning to focus mainly on blasting your way through Wonderlands. Blizzard, on the other hand, summons three frost cyclones that hunt down enemies, inflicting frost ability damage onto anything they find. A high-level Spore Warden is capable of causing incredible amounts of damage. Thanks to their Wrath of Nature skill, enemies that have recently suffered ability damage, from one of your action skills for instance, take more damage from your entire team. Pair that with the Play the Angle skill, which causes critical hits to ricochet and deal bonus ability damage to surrounding enemies. The Spore Warden is a powerful class that's perfect for players looking to experience the game solo or with friends. The Spore Warden is also the game's best beginners class. Not only does it serve as a great all-rounder, allowing newcomers to see the best that Wonderlands has to offer, but it's also extremely fun to play. Barrage in particular is probably my favourite action skill in the entire game, and when played at max level, chewing through enemies is enormous fun. Also, you get a tiny farting mushroom pal, I mean what's not to love? 
Next up, we have the Spell Shot, a magic-focused class all about dealing huge amounts of damage just like the Spore Warden. If you're looking to make the most out of Wonderland's new magic abilities, which have replaced grenades from previous Borderlands entries, then this is the class for you. The Spell Shot's passive skill is Spell Weaving. Every time the Spell Shot performs a spell or reloads their weapon, they're given a stack of Spell Weaving. This is basically a small buff that decays after a few seconds, but can be stacked by performing multiple actions in a row. Each stack of spell weaving initially increases your spell damage, however additional skills you'll unlock as you progress also let spell weaving increase gun damage, restore a portion of your ward, which is your shield, increase firing rates, and even offer the chance for your weapons to automatically reload with each kill. The polymorph action skill lets you turn an enemy into a sheep, well a skeep, because, I don't know, it's not like a sheep is a copyrighted property. Polymorph basically allows you to control the ebb and flow of the battlefield, transforming tougher enemies to keep them away from your party while you either catch your breath or focus your fire on a different enemy entirely. You also get a chance to cast a free spell after dealing gun damage to the transformed bad guy, which is pretty neat. Ambihextrus is where the real fun lies, however. This skill lets you wield two spells instead of one, and you can even perform them both at the same time. Considering each time you cast a spell, you get a stack of spell weaving, which in turn makes your spells more powerful, you can do some absolutely bonkers stuff with this ability. It's amazing. At max level, the spell shot is capable of causing huge amounts of devastation with both their guns and their magic. This is easily one of the best classes in the entire game, and a great choice for those who enjoy playing as spellcasters in an RPG. It's potentially also the best class for returning Borderlands veterans looking to play Wonderlands in a completely different way compared to more traditional Borderlands games. I mean, you can shoot fire out your hands and summon skulls and do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. If you're a bit bored of the gameplay from previous Borderlands games, choose the spell shot. If you're interested in experimenting with the game's new melee weapon system, then the Berserker is the class for you. This class has a ton of skills that increase melee damage substantially, making it a powerful force to be reckoned with for those who love to get up close and personal. The Rage of the Ancients passive skill makes the Berserker enraged every time they use an action skill, applying additional frost damage to their attacks for as long as they remain angry. The Dreadwind active skill lets you spin around for a period of time, dealing melee damage based on your currently equipped melee weapon, whereas Feral Surge sees you leaping forward to cause a huge amount of frost damage wherever you land. Non-boss enemies with health below a certain percentage will be instantly killed if you hit them with Feral Surge, which in turn will also reset Feral Surge's cooldown, allowing you to chain this ability together for as long as you're killing enemies. The Berserker is a bit tankier compared to the other classes in Wonderlands, making it great for co-op player, but its reliance on close quarters combat can potentially prove challenging for new players who are a little bit unfamiliar with previous Borderlands games. Like the Berserker, the Graveborn can also make the game a little more difficult for new players, especially those experiencing Wonderland solo. A dark magic character, the Graveborn is all about sacrificing your own health in order to inflict dark magic status effects, which leeches health back from your enemies. Dire Sacrifice sees the Graveborn sacrificing a portion of their health to cause an explosion of dark magic that, when performed in the centre of a group of enemies, will basically re-heal you instantly and keep you topped up for the rest of the battle. Reaper of Bones, on the other hand, constantly saps your health in exchange for bonus dark magic damage. When your health drops to zero, you become temporarily invulnerable before the action skill ends. You can actually keep this effect going by topping up your health by inflicting a constant stream of dark magic, which can be a fun micro-challenge whenever you're involved in huge firefights. Like the Spore Warden, the Graveborn is a companion-based class, only instead of a farting mushroom, you're joined by a rise cracking Demi Lich. The Demi Lich causes dark magic damage, which provides you with a constant stream of health. It also casts Hellish Blast every time you cast a spell, causing additional damage with the same elemental type as your currently equipped spell. 
At max level, the Graveborn is constantly losing and gaining health, casting powerful dark magic and summoning multiple companions when enemies are killed, which in turn also makes the Graveborn more powerful. It's a great class for returning players or those looking for a more challenging experience. The Stabomancer plays things safe, with an emphasis on performing critical hits. Their Ghost Blade action skill deals damage within an area based on their currently equipped melee weapon, whereas From the Shadows turns you invisible and makes every shot a guaranteed critical hit. High level skills focus on increasing critical hit chances, improving both status effect damage and duration, as well as stacking damage based on consecutive critical hits. The Stabomancer is an okay main class, but it really shines as a secondary class. Combined with something like the Spore Warden or the Spell Shot, it allows you to buff your characters beyond their limits thanks to its emphasis on critical hits and longer lasting status effects. Finally, we have the Clawbringer. Easily the most tedious class in the game, the Clawbringer is good to have as part of a group, but a bit naff when enjoying the game alone. True, it does have a little wyvern companion that deals fire damage, but its skills cover a lot without ever actually specialising in any one thing in particular. One action skill allows you to throw a hammer, like Thor, a character from the movie Thor the Dark World, which is arguably very cool, but there's just nothing really about about this class that's that fun. Playing as the Clawbringer kinda just makes Wonderlands feel like a traditional Borderlands game, which does a huge disservice to all the cool new stuff Gearbox has introduced this time around. Honestly, I'd just recommend you avoid the Clawbringer altogether and choose literally any other class instead. Before we wrap things up, it's worth mentioning that at a certain point in the story, you will be given the ability to select a second class to go alongside your primary class. While your primary class can't be changed, you can swap out your secondary class once you've finished the main game by visiting a quick change station. This allows you to experiment with combos to your heart's content during post-game activities. There are plenty of cool synergies to discover, with many classes featuring abilities in their skill tree that pair perfectly with other classes' specialisations. For example, if you're a Spore Warden, choosing the Berserker as your secondary class will allow you to increase the frost damage inflicted by your Blizzard ability. Honestly, discovering cool synergies is by far one of the best parts of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, so spend some time thinking about what kind of combinations you'd be interested in trying out before you even decide on your primary class at the very start of the game. So there we have it, the best classes in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Have you been playing the game? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.